Well, now that Francis Ngannou has finally proved that he is the best heavyweight in mixed martial arts and has never really left due to the two extracurricular boxing activities that he had to get into, obviously one was sort of a success, the other one was a complete failure, but he's a complete success in mixed martial arts overall. He's the linear recognized undisputed champion of mixed martial arts regardless of organizations because we do hold the UFC belt to that high degree, do we not? So as a result, guess what? He's the best heavyweight in mixed martial arts undoubtedly and we can't deny him of that. So moving forward with that, what is the next fight for Francis Ngannou? Well, the answer is Deontay Wilder. Now, will it be in boxing? Will it be in MMA? My answer to that is it has to be both. Terrence Crawford and Conor McGregor are in talks right now of trying to do a double fight. In other words, they fight one time in boxing and then the other time in MMA. And they are probably trying to do it within a span of a year to make as much money as they can within those two fights. Now, is it possible? Well, the answer is yes because of the fact that we have the Saudis in the world of professional boxing and MMA tied in together, trying to merge this sport into one. So what exactly does that mean for Francis Ngannou? Well, it means exactly this. For Francis Ngannou, what he needs to do is sign on the dotted line that he's going to do a boxing match first with Deontay Wilder. After he does that boxing match with Deontay Wilder, then he can go on and fight him in a mixed martial arts cage. But the problem is, what would happen if, let's say, he brutally knocks him out in MMA? Or even brutally knocks him out in boxing? Well, that's great. That's great for Francis Ngannou. Then that means you don't have to go into an MMA fight because you've already proven that you can beat this man in his own game. And would probably make it even worse if you were to do it in your own game. In a game in which you definitely have devastating leg kicks. You've seen the kicks that he's thrown at Fajera in that fight. Okay, R Really rocked his legs in and has great takedown defense. Great takedown offense. And can mount ground and pound positions on Deontay Wilder. To which Deontay Wilder will not know how to get up. But either way, that is the only fight for Francis Ngannou. I mean, think about it. He has to fight him in boxing first to give Deontay Wilder a chance. And then the outcome of that may be predicated on whether there will be a second matchup. And then that's about it. Who can Francis really fight? He can't fight guys at 1FC. There's not a contractual agreement that would help with that. Maybe there is if the Saudis come into play. How about a merger between the UFC versus PFL as a one-night event where their best ver fight versus their best and it's Francis Ngannou as sort of like the same concept that you got with the five-on-five match room versus Eddie Hearn and uh, Frank Warren with Queensberry. You could have something like that. The problem with this situation is that the UFC will not allow it because it can honestly weaken their position in terms of showing that they are the best organization in the world. We saw what happened with the fight between Eddie Hearn and uh, Frank Warren's guys. It was a complete shutout. Sometimes that's how sports works. Sometimes there is a shutout. Sometimes there is a clear domination. There isn't any of this pro wrestling story where in the end you have all these how do I say this? False pins, false submissions, and near finishes constantly go in to try to dramatize it. Sometimes it's just a one-way domination. And that is the reality of sports. So as a result, the UFC does not want to entertain the idea that they could lose any of that. Not in a five-on-five -five series the way that Matchroom and Queensberry did it. Not in any cross-promotional uh, endeavors that they've even experienced in the past with Chuck Liddell. Fighting a one-night tournament in Japan back in the Pride FC days. 
They don't want to do that. They don't want to revisit that. And they don't want the world to find out if they really are the best organization in the world. Because promotion-wise, they are already the best organization in the world. The issue is having to show that they may not have the best fighters in the world at any given night. And that is all that I have for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next content to come. Inshallah.